Is Jamie Carragher right about Arsenal? Now, recently, he made some claims comparing Pochettino's Tottenham to Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. Now, we're going to jump straight into that right now. If you are new, please do go down and hit that subscribe button. We are getting close to 4K subs. And if you haven't already, please do drop a like on the video. Now, various outlets, uh, news reports, papers, journalists have all tweeted this out. This is coming out from the Daily Mail, uh, as you can see right there. Mikel Arteta's Arsenal are in danger of becoming Mauricio Pochettino's Tottenham claims Jamie Carragher as ex-Liverpool defender pinpoints what Gunners must do this summer to take the next step. Arsenal crashed out of the Champions League on Wednesday to buy Munich. Jamie Carragher has given his verdict on the Gunners, what must do to improve, and hope is not lost for Arsenal, um, and it's wrong for Alexander Zinchenko to be a scapegoat. So, Mauricio Pochettino Spurs, probably... The best team Tottenham have had in a long, long time. We were very, very good. We had a young squad. We had some some key parts of that spine. Dembele, Deli Alley, Son, Kane. We had a very good defence. And I can see the comparisons. You know, when Mauricio Pochettino took over Tottenham, he joined from Southampton, where he kind of made a name with that fantastic squad with Mane, Van Dijk, you know, and, and other players. He got his move to Spurs, and in the first year or second year, he got us into a cup final. We challenged league titles up against Chelsea. Chelsea, We competed with Arsenal to challenge the league for Leicester. And we, in my opinion, that's that, other than the Ange Postacoglu side we're seeing now, that was the only time I've seen Tottenham actually have a plan. Mikel Arteta takes over from Arsenal. He has the backing from the Cronkies, Stan and Josh Cronkie giving him a lot of money. And he has transformed Arsenal from being a eighth place team to challenging titles. He's been there four years. And out of the four years, on two of those four years, he has challenged for a league title. Now, I'm looking at this from a neutral because I'm obviously a Spurs fan and I'm talking about Arsenal. So I'm taking out my Spurs and I'm taking out my um, my opinion on Arsenal this season. I'm just talking about this logically right now. Arsenal did spend more money than Tottenham did, but Arsenal were in a title race after three years with uh, with Arsenal. Now, you could argue that Pochettino has had a higher points tally in the Premier League. You could argue that Pochettino um, got into the Champions League more times. What I will say is, I don't feel that rival fans were as worried about Tottenham as they are worried about Arsenal right now. Like you look at you look at rival fans saying Arsenal are scary. Arsenal are a very, very, very good team right now. They were competing in the Champions League. They got to the uh, to the to the quarterfinals. I know Tottenham got to the final, and we went five hundred and eighteen days or whatever it was without signing a player. But I never felt that rival fans were worried about Spurs because there's always this narrative. It's the history of, you know, of Spurs. And I know Arsenal didn't win the title last year when they should have. And you could say there's an element of bottling in there. But the way Arteta has set his team up now, that they, they, I believe that they can beat practically anyone in the league. And in I know, I know it was their first year back in Europe, but... And I don't think they particularly did too great throughout the Champions League campaign. But I believe now that the, that from rival fans, we are we are concerned about Arsenal. I don't want to say we're scared, but we are definitely concerned. I look at I look at when Pochettino had Spurs. We had we had a fantastic eleven. We just didn't have any squad depth. You know, we had a back four of Walker, Rose, Alderweireld, and Vertonghen, similar to Arsenal's back four right now. We had a younger Hugo Lloris. We had Dembele and Wanyama, Christian Eriksen, Deli Ali, Son, Kane. But then you look at the bench, th th there was absolutely nobody that could come on and, and really make an impact where Arsenal on their bench have got the likes of Gabriel Jesus, Leandro Trossard. What I'm basically uh, getting at is Arsenal have done better in their time under Arteta. In his first year, he won an FA Cup. That's something that Pochettino never did. That's something that Tottenham haven't done in 33 years. So 
yes, he had two eighth place finishes, but he also won a trophy. So you can kind of give him a bit of slack then, you got to think. Then he, you know, had two eighth place finishes, but has bounced back with title races. With Spurs, we were in and around the top four um, for three of those five years or four of those five years. We had top four under Harry Redknapp. You know, we had top four under Conte. And we could even have top four under Pochettino, uh, under Postacoglu. But I never really felt that we we were the players, the manager, and the owner were singing from the same hymn sheet. The players, you know, wanted to win silverware. The fans wanted to see the likes of Bruno Fernandes, Philippe Coutinho come in. And we brought through Giovanni Lo Celso. We wanted Ruben Diaz under Jose. We brought through Joe Road. And it's only now under Postacoglu, we're now seeing that the manager's going out and getting first choice players. This is what's different with Arteta. Arteta wanted Zinchenko. He got Zinchenko. He wanted Ben White. He got Ben White. He wanted Jesus, Havertz, Rice. He got Jesus, Havertz, Rice. I think I think the own, one of the big differences as well, the ownership had a lot more faith in Arteta than Levy did in Poch because Pochettino wanted, there was a number of occasions where Pochettino wanted this player or that player and we didn't necessarily get him. And now you're seeing on the Postacoglu, he wanted Van der Ven and Madison. He got Van der Ven and Madison. You know, the biggest signing we spent under Pochettino was in his last year, which was Tango and Dombele. You know, under the first year under Ange Postacoglu, we put 50 million on on. Mickey van der Ven, 50, uh, 40 million on James Madison, 50 million on Brennan Johnson. Before that, 60 million on, on Richarlison. We were never making these level of signings in terms of transfer value under Pochettino. You know, it was it was 15 million on, on Toby Alderweireld, 15 million on Ericsson. But for, for getting back to the Arsenal point, for, for Jamie Carragher to come out and say, you know, they're in danger of becoming Mauricio Pochettino's Tottenham, I disagree. I think Arsenal, that that win they had against Wolves at the weekend has reignited their spark. You know, if they beat Chelsea tonight, they're six points or five points clear, sorry, of Manchester City. And Manchester City have then got to play the two games in hand. You know, as it stands, Arsenal are on 74 points. Liverpool are on 74 points. City are on 73. So by the time Manchester City play again, Arsenal and Liverpool could both be on 77 points. So they could be four points behind both of those. And City have still got to play Spurs, Fulham away, which is not an easy game. Forest away, who are fighting for their lives, and Brighton away. That those, those two games you don't want to play. You don't want to go from playing a... I know Man City basically play a load block every week, but I, this title race is not over. I said um, a couple of months ago, this is going down to the very, very end. If Mikel Arteta, once again goes to the very, very end of this title race. You know, you look at their remaining games they've got, they've got coming up. They've got Spurs away, which for me is an incredibly difficult game for Arsenal because there's no other team in the Premier League that would love to ruin their title challenge more than us. They've got Chelsea tonight, um, which I believe Arsenal will win. Then they've got Manchester United away. They've got Tottenham and Manchester United away. If they win both of those games, the people like Jamie Carragher won't be coming out and saying this. They're only saying it because you look at the comparisons that both teams didn't, and well, Arsenal haven't yet, but Tottenham didn't get over the line under under Pochettino. And Arteta hasn't got over the line yet in terms of winning a Premier League trophy. So I get the comparison, but I think Arsenal have a lot more faith in Arteta than, than Levy did in, in Pochettino. I think the fan base, I think 98, 99% of the fans want Arteta to stay. Whereas in that last year of Pochettino, we didn't win an away game for, you know, for 11 months. Jose Mourinho coming on his first away day against West Ham and won. There was almost a little bit of divide on that Champions League campaign because it was almost like we were sacrificing every Premier League result in order to to play that Champions League game. Like the last year, we, we, we lost to Bournemouth. We had a horrendous away record. Arsenal have done relatively well in their first year back in the Champions League. You know, you can criticise them and critique them for their Europa League campaign, but they're also doing that while remaining in a Premier League title race. You know, Arsenal last year had a very, very good season. They finished on 84 points. If you went back to 2016, um, Tottenham, we finished on 86 points. 
When we finished runners up, we won 26 games, lost four last year. Arsenal won 26, lost six. So there, there is a lot of similar comparisons. But if Arsenal were to win this Premier League title, then it just goes to show to everyone, every rival fan who's essentially given Tottenham, no, no, essentially given Arsenal some hate, just goes to show that you can trust the process and actually win. Arsenal genuinely could win the Premier League title this season. Liverpool got some tough games. Liverpool have still got to play three away games. You know, they've still got to play um, West Ham away on Saturday, Everton away, and then they're they're at home to Spurs. Then they've got Liverpool, then Liverpool got Villa away. I think they beat West Ham because West Ham are absolutely toilet, and I think they beat Everton tomorrow night. If Liverpool get for those three away games, then fair play. But Arsenal at the moment seem to be the talking point on all the socials. Arsenal at the moment seem to be the ones that get cr criticised the most when results don't go their way. But fair play to Arteta because last year everyone thought it was a, it was a one-off. Everyone thought it was Arsenal aren't going to be like that again next season. They've gone and done it again. Um, and I, I look at it right now and generally think if Arsenal want to be serious, they've got four slash five finals remaining. That's the way I look at it. You've got five finals remaining. If Arsenal go and win against Chelsea tonight, that puts massive, massive pressure on Brighton versus City and Everton versus Liverpool tomorrow because Arsenal will have a three-point lead over Liverpool and Liverpool have to play and have to win a Merseyside derby. And then I look at that. And Manchester City have then got Brighton away and then they've then got Nottingham Forest. So, look, the, the Premier League title race is not over. I do get some of the comparisons from, from Pochettino to Arteta. I do think, you know, I think this is a little bit of a clickbait headline from Jamie Carragher, to be completely honest with you. But we'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see what's going to happen. I, I generally think that there's a long way left of the title race. I generally think that it's going to the wire. And if, Arsenal, if, if Arteta does it, then look, Everyone who was ribbing the trust of process can basically, I've got nothing to say. What I will say is, though, this North London derby is the biggest North London derby that Arteta has had to manage. We've seen this before a few years ago when it was a North London derby in order to get top four and they completely capitulated, folded and got battered 3-0. Now, obviously, Tottenham are going into that game without Destiny Udogi to that left-hand side for us. Bukayo Saka probably will get a rest tonight and will be licking his lips. So look, massive, massive games. I get some of the comparison, but I do think some of it is a little bit taken out of context. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. I am out.